Ray Monroe is on his way home with his little family, a wife named Joanne Monroe and a six-years-old daughter named Piri Monroe. This little family just got back from Joanne's parents' home for Thanksgiving. But, it seems like the Thanksgiving dinner isn't going according to plan. Soon, they start to argue about their marriage, Joanne claims that Ray isn't the same person she married. Meanwhile, Piri is listening to her music but complains about her music device that runs out of batteries. Ray forgot to bring spares and tells her that they'll stop at the next gas station to buy some. Not long after, Piri says that she needs to use the restroom and she can't hold it, so they stop at a gas station nearby. Joanne takes Piri to the restroom while Ray goes to buy the batteries and some drinks for them. At the cashier, Ray puts down the Coke and coffee, then asks for batteries and two bottles of liquor. He gets his credit cards out but the cashier lady tells him they only take cash. He has limited cash, so he puts down the batteries instead of the liquor. Back at the car, Joanne asks for the batteries, but Ray says that they don't have any. Piri soon realizes that she lost her compact mirror and thought that maybe she dropped it at the restroom. So, Joanne goes back to the restroom and Ray searches for it in the back seat. As he is going through the back seat, he accidentally spills his coffee all over. While Ray is distracted cleaning the spills, Piri wanders around an abandoned construction site nearby. She spots a balloon stuck on a pole and approaches it, but a stray dog approaches her which makes her scared. She starts stepping backwards towards an exposed pit, as she calls out for her dad. Ray then realizes her daughter's position and slowly approaches her. He throws a rock to divert the dog's attention, but it also scares Piri and causes her to fall into the pit. Ray jumps forward trying to catch her, but he wasn't fast enough and ends up falling and hitting his head. He wakes up to Joanne's voice calling his name. Seeing her daughter lay unconscious, Joanne panics and trying to wake her up. Ray is still in a daze staring at her daughter and Joanne tries to sober him up, but Ray pushes her aside. Suddenly, Ray's focus changes and Piri wakes up calling her daddy. Ray approaches her asking if she is alright. When Ray picks her up, Piri hisses in pain, which makes them assume that she broke her arm. Joanne suggests calling an ambulance but Ray assures her that it will be much faster if he drives. Arriving at the hospital, Ray enters the building first to check them in. The hospital is very crowded that morning. He cut the line to the front desk, saying that he needs immediate help for his daughter. However, they can't cut the line and the nurse only tells him to wait. He joins Joanne in the waiting room, and Joanne snaps at him and forces him to do something. He goes back to the front desk, the nurse then tells him to write on the list and wait for the available doctor. When he goes back to Joanne, Piri is already asleep. Joanne gives him Piri's yellow scarf and apologizes for her rude behavior earlier. Joanne complains that her head hurts, so Ray gets up to buy her a drink when he spots two car accident victims brought to the ER. Not long after, his name finally gets called. The admission staff asks them some questions until she asks about Abby Monroe who is attached to his insurance. Ray flinches a little before explaining that Abby is his dead ex-wife. Then, the admission staff ask if they would be willing to place Piri on the organ donor register, to which they decline. However, the staff asks them once more, as if they are forcing Piri to donate. Of course, Ray declines it once more. A nurse named Anne, brings a wheelchair to help take Piri to the ward. There, Piri is checked on by Dr. Bertham. He asks her what happened and Piri explains that she fell and hit her head. After checking her, the doctor goes to talk to Ray and Joanne privately, where he suggests doing a CT scan on Piri to make sure she doesn't have a head injury, since her pupils don't look normal. The doctor offers to clean up Ray's wound but he declines, claiming he's fine. Another doctor named Bruce comes bringing a white teddy bear for Piri. Dr. Bruce tells them that only one parent can accompany her downstairs to the CT scan, and they decide Joanne will go. Ray smiles as her wife and daughter get into the lift and down to the basement. He waits for them in the waiting area until he falls asleep. He wakes up hours later after a patient asking if he's alright, because apparently he talks while he sleeps. He then goes to the bathroom to freshen up, but as he looks in the mirror, he notices that his wound is already treated. He asks the front desk when he can see his daughter, but the nurse says it will take a while to check because they already changed shifts. He then asks for Dr. Bertham, but he too has changed shifts. He waits for a few moments before asking the nurse again. The nurse then tells him that she can't find Piri on their database. He then asks to see nurse Anne and Dr. Bruce, but she says that there's been a full shift rotation. Ray gets angry and slams the desk. The nurse finally calls the CT scan staff and asks them, but the staff has never served a little girl today and that the last patient was an elderly woman. Reckless, Ray breaks through and starts looking for his family, until he gets caught by a security named Jeff. Not long after, a doctor named Lucato asks him what it is about. Hearing his complaint, Dr. Lucato then searches the patient papers but finds nothing on Piri. Ray then spots Nurse Anne and starts to shout at her. Dr. Lucato calls Nurse Anne asking her if she knows Ray, and she says yes, but because she was treating Ray for head injuries and not Piri. Ray starts to go mad and rage, Dr. Lucato decides to give him a sedative to make him calm down. 
They lock him in a room, but it only makes him more distressed. He then finds adrenaline shots and injects himself with it and breaks free by destroying the glass on the door. He walks around the hospital to find Peary but still no luck. Soon, Jeff spots him and starts chasing him around the hospital. Ray manages to escape through the back door and Jeff loses sight of him. He goes back to his car and cries after finding Peary's music device still in the passenger seat. Then, a police car comes into sight and he calls them to ask for help. Two of the police officers, Griggs and Childs, ask him to calm down and tell them the story. Ray explains from the fall accident until they are missing in the hospital. He shows them the photo of Joanne and Peary in his wallet to prove that he's not crazy. After three of them get to the hospital, Jeff approaches them and Ray starts to panic. Then, Jeff explains that Ray acts a fool so the doctor gave him sedative. Officer Griggs requests Jeff to take him to the ER where they meet Dr. Lucato and Nurse Anne. Dr. Lucato then explains that he doesn't know anything and he wasn't on call then. The officers ask him to call Dr. Bertham to help them clear this up. Officer Childs also asks Dr. Lucato to bring them to the CT scan lab and he guides them upstairs, but Ray remembers that his family was taken downstairs. They all go upstairs to the lab, Dr. Lucato shows them the computer record that proves Peary was never there. He then gets a call informing that Dr. Bertham has arrived. Ray begs the doctor to explain that he saw him with his family earlier, but he says that Ray was alone when he entered the hospital. He suggested a CT scan to check Ray's wound, but Ray refused and insisted on going back to the lobby and waiting for his wife, Abby. Confused, Officer Griggs asks who Abby is, because Ray says that his wife's name is Joanne, to which he explains that Abby is his dead ex-wife. Jeff suggests that they check the CCTV records but still, they don't find anything indicating that Joanne and Peary were ever there. Dr. Bertham informs them that they find someone that can clear everything up. Walking through the ward, Ray spots Peary's scarf beside a bed and picks it up. He gives it to Officer Childs but when she opens it up there's a blood stain on it. Ray claims that it's his blood not Peary's. Then, Dr. Lucato comes with a psychiatrist, Dr. Teresa. She introduces herself to Ray and brings him to talk privately. She then tells Ray that they found the medical papers, but it's in Ray's name and no mention of Peary's. Dr. Teresa digs deeper into Abby, and Ray explains that Abby died eight years ago in a car accident, but insists that it doesn't have anything to do with this. Turns out, Abby suffered heavy blood loss from the accident, but Ray couldn't help them because he was too drunk, leading to her demise. After the talk, Dr. Teresa suggests that they go back to the gas station, so she, Ray, and the officers go there where they meet with the K-9 unit to help them with the investigation. The dog smells something at the construction pit, and they find Peary's missing compact mirror, but it's not the only thing they find. As the officer clears up the snow, they find a pool of blood. Ray claims that it's his blood but the officers don't believe him as it's too much for a mere cut. Dr. Teresa asks again what happened before the accident. And this time, Ray finally tells her that they fought about their marriage, and he started to cry, explaining that he tried really hard to grab Peary when she fell, but she was out of reach. Dr. Teresa starts to conclude the real occurrence. She asks him whether there were even a dog and if that were even an accident, asking him if he is only making them up. She thinks that his anger towards Joanne was what made his daughter fall. She moves closer to him and asks where he hides Joanne and Peary, but he isn't answering and just stares blankly to the distance. When Officer Childs is about to put him on cuff, the K-9 barks at another dog, which turns out to be the same dog that scared Peary. It convinces Ray that the accident did happen. He steals the officer's gun and points it at Dr. Teresa, and asks all of them to throw out their gun and radio. After that, he forces them to get in a shed and lock them in. He immediately drives back to the hospital and gets in from the back door. He grabs flowers from the nurse desk and stands in the hallway to blend in. Turns out, the room he stands in front of is the baby's room. As he looks at a newborn baby, he gets a flashback of Abby's accident. It shows that Abby died while being pregnant with their first baby. He moves on and steals a doctor's coat, before getting into the lift where he last saw Joanne and Peary. Once he's in, he realizes that he needs a key to go to the lowest floor. Suddenly, Jeff joins him in the lift. Realizing he has found out, Ray drags him in and points a gun towards him. Jeff tries to reason with him but Ray is tired of listening. Jeff reaches out for the key and throws it at Ray which allows him to disarm him. They fight for a while until Jeff gets his arm around Jeff which causes him to pass out. Finally, Ray arrives at the lowest floor, walking through the hallway still holding the gun. He passes a trash can when he notices something moving. He reaches out to pick it up, which turns out to be the teddy bear that Dr. Bruce gave to Peary when they were about to get to the CT lab. Suddenly, two medical staff get out of a room with a trolley. Inside, he sees boxes that contain human organs. Fearing that his family's organs are being harvested, Ray gets into the room where they find two dead bodies. He opens the cover and reveals two bodies that already got their organs harvested. Ray gets out of that room and follows a nurse to another room down the hallway. There, 
he finds a couple doctors that are about to operate on a little girl, none other than Piri. He bursts in the room pointing the gun toward the doctors. He instructs them to take off their mask who turns out to be Dr. Lucado and the nurse on the front desk when he first arrived. He also finds his wife, Joanne who already got drugged on a wheelchair. He then grabs Piri from the operating table. The nurse tries to ring the alarm, but Ray shoots at her first and hits the oxygen pipe. He places Piri on Joanne's lap and turns to the door as another nurse grabs him, trying to sedate him once more. But, Ray manages to grab the gun and pull the trigger, causing an explosion. He gets up and pushes Joanne and Piri through the hallway, but before they can make it to the lift, Dr. Bruce and a nurse block his way. They try to convince him not to leave. Not wanting to listen to their lies anymore, Ray shoots him in the leg. He makes it to his car and places Joanne and Piri in the back seat, and drives away from the hospital. On their way home, Piri complains that her arm still hurts, so Ray offers to sing a lullaby to calm her. As Ray sings, it is revealed that the person in the back seat isn't his family, but a poor dying man. Turns out, Dr. Teresa was right, Joanne and Piri never set foot in the hospital, and Ray made it all up. There was never a box with human organs in the trolley, he has never seen a dead body with no organs, and it's not Joanne that he pushed on the wheelchair, but a poor man that he took from the operation table. The real story is, Piri fell and hit her head hard. Facing the fact that he couldn't save his daughter, Ray is reminded of Abby and his unborn baby who he couldn't save either. Ray still dazed out when Joanne approached him and unconsciously pushed her. Unfortunately, Ray pushed her to the direction of protruding pieces of rebars and her head landed on them, eventually killing her too. His mind can't take the fact that he has caused his family's death twice, so his mind made a new reality, thinking that he's an amazing husband and father that successfully rescued his family from danger. While in fact, he drives with a poor dying man in the passenger seat and his wife and daughter's dead bodies in the trunk. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.